Hello everyone, welcome to questions and answers based on the course of computational finance. Today we have question number 20 that is based on materials in lecture number 9 and that lecture is focused on a Monte Carlo simulation. The question of today is what is a standard error and how to interpret it? Um, this uh, particular question is related to pricing using Monte Carlo where we uh, for example, we have discretized a stochastic model, we have performed the pricing, and then if you repeat your simulation again, then you get slightly different price. The question is, how big is the difference between the pricing, whatever you will repeat your experiment, and how this difference or standard deviation of all those prices, it is dependent on number of uh, simulated paths. And of course, it is very important that you will choose number of simulated scenarios uh, accurately, or you could say in a way that your results are as stable as possible. You don't want to have a situation when you perform an experiment with a pricing experiment, and then you reprice your derivative and the number, the price changes significantly. It is important to understand what is the impact of the number of simulations on your prices. And this is very important in a, not only in a pricing, but also let's say in a hedging and calculations on sensitivities. So this is basically the, 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 the essence of this question. Uh, the answer to this question is related to the fact uh, about, uh, let's say, uh, the stochastic nature of calculation of average. If you calculate, if you have few numbers and you calculate average, this is the average. However, in a sense of a sampling or simulation, it, this is not really, uh, the, the average is also a stochastic quantity. This is something to keep in mind. Whenever we talk about samples and averages, average mean is a stochastic quantity because it will change depending on the samples that you have used in your simulation. Therefore, it is important to understand the variance of that uh, expectation. So the, the, this, what is actually the standard error, error? Standard error is defined as a square root of the variance of the estimator that we want to what we calculate to estimate the real value. So let's go step by step and then we will define also, uh, we'll give you explicit definition and relation between variance of the estimator and the standard error. Uh, as in every Monte Carlo simulation, we always start with uh, some discretization grid. So we start with a uh, time t0 until the expiry maturity of the, uh, of the option. And then we have uh, some number of time steps. Then we have a uh, uh, SIJ. So this is a, a path which indicates the i indicates time where we are and j is the number of paths. So if we have a certain payoff, which will pay at uh, time, uh, in this case, it will be paid at the end, uh, at the maturity time tm, then we can see that payoff at every path can be simply written as h, t, s, m, j. So j is a number, of, it's a particular path and m is the corresponding point at the end. So if we have simulation, this is our point t equal to t, uh, it will be t m, and then we have number of some simulated paths. We simulate them until this point. Using simulated paths, we try to estimate distribution of the asset, so this distribution of our asset s at time t, that we approximate using the discretized stochastic process. So as you know, we are not always able to find the, the the solution for ST, and for that reason, we use Monte Carlo simulation. So what we will do next, so once we have the payoff, we can evaluate payoff at every path, then we calculate the average. Average is simply uh, given here, so it's expectation. Of course, we have risk neutral measure, uh, expectation of our payoff at the stock simulated at the maturity here, which is approximated simply by average one over N, and when we sum, all the realizations of our payoff at every path. And this is indicated by H bar N. And then if you want to calculate option price, we include also the discounting part. So it's a discounted future payoff. So we already have learned that in the course, uh, option price is always discounted future payoff. So we have discounted, and this is the expected future payoff that we evaluate. So this expected future payoff. And the standard error is the related to value obtained here. So here we have uh, the value is uh, expectation uh, of a discounted expectation of the future values. So the question is how this uh, expectation, how this estimator 
what is the variance of this estimate? We, of course, we know that it will depend on number of paths, and we want to find this relation between number of paths and the variance of the estimator. And how many paths we need to do? What is the, what is the influence of number of paths on the variance of the uh, variance of the estimator? And that's the key element of this question. So we know that from the, from the law of uh, um, strong law of large numbers, that if we have number of paths going to infinity, this estimator, the average estimator, will converge to the theoretical uh, uh, expectation with probability 1. Now, let's take a look at the variance. So we have this estimator h bar n. We want to find the variance, and this variance uh, defined in terms of uh, number of paths, and also because this variance is the, let's say, the, the quantity you want to estimate. What is the variability of our estimator depending on number of paths? So we calculate this variance, and this is simply 1 over here var, and then we have this definition of our estimator, and then we go into the, we exchange sum, the variance of the, uh, under the sum sign. Here we, of course, we assume that we have independence between the samples, so those samples are sampled independently. We don't, this means we don't have any cross terms, and then we end up with 1 over n squared, so this constant is squared, and then we have a sum of the variances. Of course, we don't know this uh, variance theoretically, so that will be estimated based on an unbiased estimator here. So this means that we can actually here, if we have, we can calculate this from sample. So we have this estimator of the average here. We calculate for every path. So then we can, if this is our uh, estimation, we can actually, we can substitute here. So we end up with one over here n squared. We have a summation of our v n squared. And of course, this n here is, is um, it's the same for every j. So this means that we have n times v n n squared divided by n squared. So this cancels out. We end up with a v n squared n. And as I mentioned before, a standard error is a, a square root of the variance of our estimator. So error, so the standard error, let's write it here, error will be defined as a square root of our v n squared divided by n, which is equal to v n divided by n, and we have, of course, square root, which is also written here. So in the interpretation of this error, so this is uh, this is the final result. This is the definition of our standard error. It, mm, the interpretation of it is as follows. Because we have the square root in number of samples, this means that when a number of samples increases by factor 4, the error will only reduce by a factor of 2. So this is something to keep in mind. What is the relation between your distribution, your variance of your error, and the number of samples? So this, this has, addresses this question. So as mentioned before, it is important that if you have, the, let's say, the practical takeaway, it is very important to keep in mind that uh, if you have, uh, let's say, a Monte Carlo simulation, always chain, check it with respect to stability of number of paths. How does it affect your results? And if your results are not converging or you see the significant difference, if you increase number of paths, this means that you should maybe analyze the convergence uh, of the of your simulation. It, especially this is important if your payoff, so in this case, if we consider just a European type of payoff, this convergence is typically not difficult to get even for a uh, not large number of Monte Carlo paths. However, if you consider callable payoffs, this means they are very sensitive to paths. This could imply that you need significant large number of Monte Carlo simulations in order to get a sufficiently stable results. And this is the, the difference, huge difference between European type of payoffs, uh, digital type of payoffs, so the ones which are having digitality, and also exotic derivatives like American options or callable products in general. So it's uh, the stability uh, and influence effect from uh, number of paths. It is always very important to keep an eye on it and analyze it uh, before it's too late. See you next time. Bye bye.